Well, folks, in today's video, we're going to be working on this vintage Varney F3 Union Pacific engine. This was a locomotive which was sent in from a channel called HO Scale Modeler. And uh, according to them, the history of this engine is that I guess it was bought by uh, somebody opening up a train store and it sat in the shop for 60 years and it was never sold. So he bought it and uh, sent it in a lot quite generously to me. I believe we tested this thing and it was showing no signs of life, which if this thing's, you know, been sitting for that long is not surprising because in all likelihood the metal components have oxidized and are no longer working correctly. But if uh, the parts are all in good shape, I think we got a pretty good shot at getting it going again. Anyway, we'll bring it over the track, see if we can get anything out of it, and then we'll go from there. I really like the old uh, packaging these things used to come in, and uh, this is the only brand I've seen too which actually advertised how long its models were supposed to run for. It's pretty interesting. Anyway, let's get this thing out of the box so we can uh, test it out here. There's the model. Yeah, everything doesn't look too bad. Let's see if she'll do anything. Now, as I said, the first time we tested this thing, I'm pretty sure it didn't show any signs of life, but I just want to be sure here. I'm putting uh, 12 volts in the track and uh, I'm not seeing any uh, current draw. So yeah, it's just doing the same thing it did before. It also feels like something's wrong with this uh, rear truck. It's loose. In fact, there's a broken wire right there, which might explain why this is not starting. Let's take it back over to the workbench. So I guess we'll just pull out the drive as is. Have a look around. Everything looks to be in really good shape. Um, yeah, I wonder where this wire is supposed to go. Probably down to that lead right there, or maybe the one on the uh, on the right. I don't know. Oh, they're both broken off. Nice. All right, so that's a good place to start. Broken solder joints are a very common problem on older locomotives. The solder can just become very brittle, especially as it gets older. And you know, with this thing's you know heating up and cooling down uh, over time, it, you know when the metal expands and shrinks, it can just break. And uh, I often recommend too um, when you're opening up an engine, even if something looks like it's soldered. Uh, give the wires a little tug to be sure, because sometimes there can be a crack which you can't see. Because sometimes you, know, you get a wire like if that was if that had held there it would not be obvious that it was necessarily broken so always give the wires just a, a gentle tug anyway I'm now gonna try to uh, solder these wires back on which should be kind of interesting it's not the best soldering iron for doing something like this but should get the job done I think we got that one, but the solder did not flood as well as I was hoping. There we go. Well, I've got the other one all soldered up, so hopefully this drive will start now. Let's uh, give her a go here. Oh yeah, it's going. Yeah, it's a little, little rough. The thing is, as this is starting to move, you'll notice it's speeding up, and that's just because it's... Uh, the oxidization on all the metal parts as this all turns uh, it should wear off so that's something positive I will have a look at the commutator and everything though just to be sure all is all right in those areas I just got a basic spring here which you should be able to pretty easily just kind of move around trying not to bend it here Well, can't really take it out, but at least we can access this. It also looks like there's some oil on the commutator, surprisingly. I don't know if that would be from the factory or what the case is. The gaps look okay, I think, though. Double check them. If this engine had never been sold, I would, I'd be surprised if there was anything in the gaps but it's not inconceivable this thing was run in the store you know you never know if some some stores they'll they'll you know actually allow you to test out the product so maybe over the years this thing actually did have some miles put on it yeah there's a little bit of dirt nothing nothing too severe though 
main thing I think is just whatever oil is on there, which I'm really surprised to see on an engine like this. And I'll just come in here with a fiberglass pencil and try to clean up anything that's left. Okay, that seems a bit better now. Let's uh, give it a bit of oil too. Put some down there. I'm gonna put a little on the outside here. I just wanna keep oil away from the commutator so we don't end up repeating the same mistake. Yeah, other than that, the whole drive seems to be turning pretty well. To be completely honest with all of you, I'm not 100% sure how you're supposed to open up this bottom part and I'm a little bit concerned that if it's held in by a clip, this plastic might have become so brittle it I might break it if I open it. And you can see it's already broken here too, which is why this truck was not being held in anymore. So I think I'll just leave that be because again, it's all turning okay. And uh, well, yeah, it seems fine too. I think what I want to focus on now is trying to come up with a solution to connect this thing back up to the frame. And uh, also I want to clean the wheels up because they're probably a lot worse than meets the eye but there's quite a there's a thin layer of oxidization which is probably not making this so great yeah i think the wheels are definitely uh, a lot worse than meets the eye I don't know if this is going to work, folks. Let's uh, let's give it a go. Just uh, put that in there, and uh, I did check. See, the range is it's decent, so it might emulate that part. And the plax the plastic's kind of flexible, so yeah, it's it's really hard to say. If uh, if this does work, I'll be impressed. But let's give it a shot here. A good amount. Yeah, we don't want to be stingy with that stuff. And uh, so there's a lot of things that need to happen here. We have this drive link, which has to fit into the other side, and then we need to somehow get that to line up with the two areas where I put the glue. I don't think the part's going in. And now this has come out. We're running out of ideas here, folks. Well, it seems like bending some metal to try to make a replacement part has kind of worked. I put some glue down there and uh, everything seems pretty sturdy in my opinion. It all looks okay. The whole uh, locomotive is sitting evenly, so I think this thing is ready to be brought over the track, and uh, yeah, we'll find out if uh, our efforts were successful or not. Let's go have a look. All right, here, let's get this thing set up on the track. I think that's okay. Well, let's give it some power. Hey, we have got a runner. Wow, okay. Uh, it's a little loud, but um, that's pretty good in my opinion. You know, these things are never quiet either. Here, let's try uh, running it at a slow speed. Well, it's not perfect, but I, I wouldn't call that bad. It's not stalling or anything, so that's pretty nice. Why don't we hook up some train cars and uh, let this thing haul, haul a little bit of weight? 
All right, well, she's all ready to go with a little eight car consist. Let's see how this all works. No problems, that's terrific. A couple of funny noises, but uh, yeah, other than that, I really wouldn't consider that uh, too bad of a runner. It's running consistently, which is really what matters. It's also only a four wheel drive engine too, with four wheel drive pickup, so. Not gonna be flawless over some of the switches, but yeah, it's doing all right. This is also uh, only at half power too. But imagine if we crank it up. Yeah, this thing can go pretty fast. So that's all good. Let's bring her home here. Well, I'm overall very uh, happy with how that turned out. It's a little bit loud, but as I was saying, these older engines usually are that way, you know, they're never gonna be perfect just because of how they were built. But it's running consistently and at a good speed, which is really what matters. So yeah, no complaints there. You know, an engine which has apparently been sitting in a hobby shop for 60 years now ripping around the layout. I think that's pretty awesome. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed. And uh, with that, I'd like to thank you all so much for watching.